today's video we're going to talk about is the first generation Toyota Sequoia a good overland vehicle. So we're in Joshua Tree which is about two hours outside of Los Angeles, California. I am going to go on the Geology Tour Road Trail. I might go on the Burdu Canyon Trail, which I've done in my 100 series Toyota Land Cruiser, which I just sold. And I went without an overlanding vehicle for a while and I decided to pick up a very cheap 2001 four wheel drive Toyota Sequoia uh, V8, same engine basically. And in today's video, I just basically want to talk about is this a good overland vehicle and the, and the vehicle that I can compare it to is my Toyota Land Cruiser, my 2000 Toyota Land Cruiser that had about the same mileage. These vehicles both have 230,000 miles. Now, the Land Cruiser was original owner and it was taken care of very, very well. This vehicle, I can't say the same about. I don't know how many owners it's had, but by the looks of the paint, it's been probably wrecked, repainted. Um, Driveline wise, it's very mechanically sound so far, um, but we're just getting to the trailhead entrance, so I just wanted to show you where we're at, and then a little bit later on, we're gonna go over uh, what I think about this vehicle. All right. So one of the things, this is push button four wheel drive. Literally, now we're in four wheel drive. So the biggest difference is this has two open differentials. The Toyota Land Cruiser has, basically it uses the braking system and some other, it's complicated, but essentially the all wheel drive system and the Land Cruiser is superior to this. I don't want to get into that too much. I just want to stick to for overlanding. There's a few things that make a good overlanding vehicle, and let's talk about it later on in this video. But first, let's just um, let's just check out the scenery, and we'll talk about it in a little bit. So we are on Purdue Trail, uh, heading towards Purdue Canyon, and I decided to go from the original trail and go ahead and do the Purdue Canyon. I was just going to do a little loop, but you can take this trail all the way to through the mountains. It's a 26 mile one way. It cuts through the mountains and then you end up in a BLM, which is uh, basically like, I think it's state owned land and it's a shooting range, which I did another video of the Land Cruiser going down this trail. But what I realized is I left my gallon of water at home. So if for some reason I break down out here or have a malfunction, get stuck, I've got about 48 hours before I uh, die of dehydration. So, I haven't had much to drink today. I've had a coffee, a big coffee, and uh, I'm already thirsty. So, it's supposed to get 80 degrees. I've got blankets to keep warm if I get stuck out here, but I do not have water. So, this makes this little excursion a bit more interesting. So I'm halfway, I'm about six miles in, the trail looks good, the truck's doing good, oil pressure's good, water temperature's good, no suspension parts have broken or anything. So, so far, so good. Um, and this is where we're at right now. We're getting closer to the mountain. It says we have about, nine more miles before we get to the actual canyon canyon but as you see we're starting to head in between the mountains now so one thing about the sequoia that never happened on the land cruiser was the first outing off road i had a sway bar end link that broke so to say that the sequoia to say that the land cruiser is more rugged is definitely true the Land Cruiser would never have a sway bar end link just from doing some, you know, moderate off-roading. Uh, so the Sequoia is definitely not built the same for off-roading. 
and once that sway bar end link broke the other side busted and then it started rubbing on the um, axles the CV boot so it busted the boot the grease slung out and now I've got a hole in the boot and it's probably getting all this dust pushed in there so I haven't heard any noises there's a jackrabbit I haven't heard any big noises or anything yet but here we are we're entering the canyon all right guys this is where I had a bit of trouble last time getting the Land Cruiser through so let's take it out and see which line we want to take so let's go look at the terrain and see if we want to go to the left or to the right on the Land Cruiser I went to the right but this thing's bigger so the right side is better for ground clearance, but it's tighter. And the left side is way better uh, size-wise. I can fit through there, but it's a lot more divoted uh, for ground clearance. It might be tough. So let's go check it out. Right, guys so is the Toyota Sequoia a good overlander well there's a couple pros and a couple cons and the thing that I can compare it to is my 100 series Land Cruiser now when you're talking about overlanding uh, you're talking about self-contained you know self-sustaining travel over long distances something like that well if you're gonna be traveling long distances you're gonna need to have some reliability so it's a Toyota and most Toyotas are pretty reliable that's why most overlanders use Toyotas right um, a lot of off-roaders overlanders use Toyotas a lot of guys that use for work trucks in the city that do lawn care use Toyotas there's a reason it's because they don't break down they hold the value okay so this is a Toyota it holds its value it does not break down generally speaking there's a few things to watch out for like the front axles um, and there can be frame rust they had a bulletin where if your frame rust out um, you can get that replaced by Toyota they'll weld a new one in um, there's a couple other little things but basically this truck just had its time belt changed it's good for another 100,000 miles and it has new tires so it's good so when it comes to the Sequoia the pro that it has over the Land Cruiser is it has more cargo space it has more little cup holders it has more little places to the glove box is bigger it's like this double glove box thing in the back you can have more space if you want if you would like to camp inside of the truck there's more space to do that so you know you're gonna have a lot more space inside the vehicle for for you know and that's what overlanding is about right you need to carry a lot of stuff with you so if you want to keep it in the vehicle this is actually superior to the Land Cruiser because it has more space now where it's inferior is the four-wheel drive system it essentially if you get two if it's very articulated one wheels up in the air the other one's up in there it's essentially two-wheel drive once they're in the air and they're spinning a so four-wheel drive is a two-wheel drive when they're both in the air so you have to learn how to use your brakes and if you don't know how to use your brakes then you, you know it's it's not as good it's just not as good at all um, so you know unless you're going up some really some really muddy stuff which we don't have a lot of mud out here in the West Coast um, it's mostly dry sand deserty material so you know it gets dusty and sandy that's the thing so sand or mud right or, or snow or ice right um, that's that's where that's gonna be a problem but generally speaking these dry trails that are just you know inclines as long as it's not very you know there's not a lot of uh, not a ton of articulation you're gonna be fine 
Now, if you've got a lot of articulation, the Land Cruiser is going to do way better for you. So, the pro for the Sequoia would be the cargo space, how much you can put inside the vehicle if you're moving a lot of coolers. I mean, you could deck this whole thing out on the inside because the rear seats come out and uh, there's actually a three row as well. Um, and you can, you can just, I'll show you in the back. I've got a mattress I can lay down and uh, take a nap back there if I want to, a fold out mattress. So, inferior will be the four wheel drive system. Now, the other thing as a side note, and it's a little subjective, is the build quality. The Sequoia feels a little bit, I don't wanna say cheaper, but it feels a little cheaper. Um, and it was, it was like, I'm not sure the, the MSRP in 2001 compared to the Land Cruiser, but I'm pretty sure the Land Cruiser was at least 50 and this was probably more like 40. Anyways, I'm not going to guess on numbers right now because I don't have any idea, but I know the Land Cruiser has always been the most expensive uh, Toyota, generally speaking, uh, as far as SUVs anyways. So, like for example, on the Land Cruiser, the exhaust material is like, you know, stainless and it's extra thick. It's not gonna rust out, etc. The Some of the, the, like the door handles I noticed feel a little cheaper on this. On the Land Cruiser, they're integrated into the body. They're set, reset, recessed. And uh, on this, the, they just break. So a lot, like the rear hatch handle breaks. Sunroof's not working. I'm old Land Cruiser, the sunroof worked. The rear sliding window works, but not the, not the hatch or the sunroof. The hatch works, but it's you gotta you gotta finagle the latch. So some of the door handles, the latches, the hood cable has let go. So you have to manually pull a cable with your fingers, and the gas door handle doesn't work. So these cables to the hood and the gas latch have stretched out. So these types of things get worn out. They used a cheaper, they went with someone else on these on these um, fixtures and they're cheaper. On the Land Cruiser, the one that I had, maybe it's just the one because it was a one owner and it was very, very well taken care of, but none of that was wrong with the one that I had. So this one's a rough one, I know. The Sequoia that I bought is a rough one and it was the cheapest one, that's why I got it. And here we are you know, 20 miles, you know, well, 150 miles outside of LA, and I'm in the middle of, where I'm at, grabbing this thing. It's a $3,000 truck I got off Craigslist, and I'm just out in the middle of nowhere. And look, if you look at the water temperature, I've had the AC on the whole time, 182. You got oil pressure, we're, we're rocking and rolling. Nothing funny is sound, you know, nothing funny is going on inside of here. Um, I turned off the AC so you, you hear my volume, but I'm telling you, if you just want to go camping and hit some trails like this and pretty much go 90% of the, 90% of the trails, you know, no, you know, some people would call this a Jeep trail. I just saw a Jeep on this trail and I'm having no problem getting around on this stuff. Now there's not a lot of articulation. It's not rutted out. Um, and in the video, of course, everything doesn't look steep as it is. But um, I'm telling you, as far as value, you know, I really love the Land Cruiser. But for a $3,000 truck, this is a $3,000 truck, guys. And you're not going to find anything else. What are you going to find that's reliable, four-wheel drive, has this much interior space? What are you going to find? This is it. What else can you get? You can get a like a 80s or an early 90s forerunner that's been beat to heck. Um, it's not gonna have the cargo space. It's gonna be a little bit better off-road probably. I don't know what generation those are, second or second gen maybe. Um, you can get the late 90s, you can get like the like a 2004 one or four-wheel drive for similar price probably. Um, but, are you going to be able to tow, um, pardon, I've got to turn on this AC a little bit. Are you going to be able to tow, you know, I think it's 5,500 pounds. 
Maybe, now I think it's 6,500. Can you tow 6,500 with a 4Runner? If you get the V8, you can, but with the six cylinder, you won't be able to. So, are you gonna have the interior space? Are you gonna have the capacity to put all of your gear inside? This is huge inside. And I'm still making it down these trails just fine. So, what makes a good overlander? Reliability, capability off-road, storage space, you know, payload, I guess, like how much can you actually, how much weight can you actually put inside the vehicle? How much can you put on the top of the vehicle? How much can you tow? But essentially what you're gonna be doing is 90% of the time, you're gonna be driving on the asphalt to the trail. Okay, I'm, I've got this truck in two wheel drive now. I've just been cruising on this trail in two wheel drive to be honest, um, on a lot of the trail. Um, so 90% of the time that you're overlanding, you're gonna be on a highway going to the next trail. And then you're gonna be off road for 10 miles, maybe 20 miles, maybe 50 miles. Let's say you, you don't even, you know, but the majority of the time the vehicle's actually going to be on road. So the off-road capabilities are nice to have. You need them 100% when you need them. Um, it's always nice to have a front and rear locker, which this does not have, or a limited slip. So it really does kind of suck when you get in that predicament. You're just you're just out of luck. You can try the left foot braking to keep that wheel from spinning, but you're kind of out of luck. So you can pretty much go anywhere you want to in this thing, except for you know 10% of the places where it's very articulated. It's on a hill. So, I guess that wraps it up, guys. Um, basically, the four-wheel drive system isn't as good as the Land Cruiser, but this has way more storage capacity. This has the same V8, you know, that will go 500,000 miles. In the Tundra, it's gone like a million miles. So, you know, for the price that these first-generation Sequoias are going for, I think it's a great... I think it's a great way to get outdoors and go explore and go have fun, get out of the city, um, go camping with your family, go have a weekend by yourself. I mean, you open this hatchback here and you can sleep inside the vehicle. That's what I plan on doing is sleeping inside the truck. So there is like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, six cup holders in the front. There's big pouches to put things. There's pouches here, there's pouches there. There's this huge double glove box. There's thing for sunglasses. It's got the remote programmable home link to get in and out of the garage door. Um, it's got gas mileage calculator, northeast, southwest, you know. Um, the, rear, the rear window rolls down like that. So it's got a cool, a, a few unique, cool little features for, you know, a $3,000 truck. So anyways, is the Toyota Sequoia a great overlanding vehicle? Absolutely. This is a six foot bed and this is with the seats still in here. So the third row is removed and the middle, so the AC is on, I've got rear AC. So these vents, I mean, the engine has to run, of course, but you've got rear vents. I'm sitting at a rest station, uh, a little bit side out of Joshua Tree in the really, really windy area. I think it's about 70 something today, but it's hot enough if you're gonna be sleeping in the car to turn on the air conditioner. So I just folded, I bought this tri-fold mattress on Amazon. I used it in the Prius once when I went camping inside the Prius, try that. Um, this is a bit more spacious, as you can see. I can sit straight up on my butt. No problem, 5'11", roughly six foot. Um, you know, I have, I have plenty of space. I actually have a cooler back here. Um, and these seats are, I, all I did was fold them up. So technically they'd go forward more if I even push the seat forward. So I can completely, I'll put my feet flat against the, the tailgate and I have plenty of space. Actually very comfortable, the AC's on, this mattress is comfortable, 
got this little thermal thing. I've got another blanket <clears throat> if I need this heavy duty thing. That was for if I got stuck out in the desert and my car broke down, but it doesn't. And look, you got more cup holders. Two more on each side, as if you didn't have enough. So this is a big reason why the Sequoia, this this uh, beats the Land Cruiser by a good margin. It, it's, it's a little taller, it's a little wider, it seems like, and it's definitely, so the Land Cruiser, if you had these seats completely removed, it would be, about this size. So this truck has another, it feels like another foot in length and maybe the width is roughly the same, hard to say. Anyways, I can see the water temperatures from here on my scan gauge. 186 is the same temperature as when I'm riding down the highway. So I'm just gonna crash for 15 minutes because I've been up since four and then I'll hit back, I'll hit, hit the road on the way back for another two hour drive to get back to LA. So this is why it's great for overlanding. All right guys, thanks for watching. I've got some links in the descriptions to the Trifold mattress and a few other things that I use for overlanding and for the uh, Toyota Sequoia or Toyota Land Cruiser for that matter for the 100 series. So go ahead and check those out in the description below. Uh, I also tagged them in the comment section. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe if you're interested in uh, automotive news and car reviews. So thanks for watching, and if you have a Toyota Land Cruiser or a Sequoia, or you've had both of them, let me know your experience in the past. So let me know in the comments section. I'd like to hear from you. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day.